hey guys welcome back to our youtube channel it's a girl funny longo back with another reaction video if you're new to this channel make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe like i said my name is funny longo and if you're new welcome if you're not welcome back hope you guys are doing all right and may you stay blessed you can find us on instagram and facebook as funny and jesse and just feel free to go there hit us up say hi we'll say hi back and yeah check out my blog morning coffee with funny and just enjoy the positive blogs that i put out there a big shout out to the person that suggested this they suggested i react to um message to non-muslims jordan peterson's message to muslims so without wasting time let's get into the video Welcome to this special edition of the CJ Wellerman Show. I'm CJ Wellerman. Thank you for joining us. But first, a quick reminder to click on the subscribe button below so you never miss a single episode. Now let's get into it. Jordan Peterson, a pseudo-intellectual who's widely popular among sexually insecure, non-college educated, white middle-class men, has published a message to Muslims, to the 5 million subscribers on his YouTube channel. Well, here's my message to non-Muslims about Jordan Peterson's message to Muslims. In a single six minute, 51 second recording, Peterson manages to squeeze in every stupid white man's trope ever told about Islam, Muslims, and the Middle East. His message essentially boils down to this. Hey Muslims, stop fighting with each other. Leave the Jews and Christians alone. Your true enemy is within. So make new pen pals with your imagined and perceived enemies of Islam. Muslims, reach across the sectarian divide. Shiites, find a Sunni pen pal. Communicate with someone on the other side. Sunnis, do the same. And then maybe reach out tentatively to a Christian or even, heaven forbid, a Jew. Because perhaps it is time for those who purport to be followers of God to act like it. You see, Peterson wants you to believe that Muslims are backwards and barbaric, while white dudes just like him are educated, enlightened, and civilized. It's the great lie told by all colonial powers to justify the pacification and subjugation of those who stand in the way of our capitalist exploits and imperial projects. He wants you to believe European colonial powers never destroyed civic, social, and political life in the Muslim majority countries they once occupied. He also wants you to pretend that violence in Muslim majority countries is the product of ancient rivalries and not the legacy of colonial divide and rural strategies. So when he calls on Muslims to reach across the sectarian divide, it suggests he's never read a single book on the history of the Middle East like ever. You gotta wonder then, how does he get to prance around the world as an intellectual without ever knowing the works of the great post-colonial writers such as Edward Said, Franz Fanon, and Albert Mimi. But if somehow he accidentally trips on the sidewalk and falls face first into a fucking library, he will learn that sectarianism in the Muslim world was harnessed and fueled by European colonial powers who sought to plunder Muslim lands by dividing and conquering indigenous Muslim populations. Divide and rule is how France conquered Syria in elevating the Shia Alawite minority to rule over the Sunni majority. And Britain did this in Iraq by privileging the Sunni minority to rule over the country's Shia majority. It's how we ended up with dictator Saddam Hussein and Bashar al-Assad. This is basic first year undergraduate post-colonial stuff, but Peterson doesn't get it, even though he holds a PhD. So tell me Jordan, how does a Sunni in Iran or a Shiite in Saudi Arabia reach across to their sectarian counterparts when doing so will get them arrested for plotting a seditious conspiracy against their respective sectarian regimes? I mean, it's a little difficult for Sunnis to make friends with Shiites in Syria, given the Assad regime has spent the past decade ethnically cleansing Sunni Muslims and replacing them with Shia migrants from Iran and Lebanon to help keep the dictator in power. And tell me, Jordan, how do Muslims in Gaza reach out to the Jews in Israel when two million Palestinians are permanently caged in the world's largest open-air concentration camp by the apartheid Israeli regime, which so happens to be supported by the government of your country, Canada? But Peterson knows all this. 
He might not be the brightest bulb in the tanning bed, but he's not a total imbecile, so it's pretty obvious he's carrying the water for covert political aims. For whom? Well, let's start with the fact that somehow Peterson has attracted a significant Muslim audience, and he says so here. Oh, I have been informed by many sources and also observed online, not least because of my discussions with a variety of Muslim thinkers, supporters, and critics, that I have developed an audience in the Muslim world. But here comes the tell. He pivots to praising the Abraham Accords, or what former President Trump called his deal of the century. Extraordinary Abraham Accords, which have laid out the possibility for peace between all the people of the book in an unprecedented manner. This suggests the Israel lobby has got to him, the same way it often gets to those with significant Muslim audiences, like it did when it co-opted Sheikh Yusuf Hamza and when it infiltrated the Council on American-Islamic Relations to spy on American Muslims. This is what Israel does. And now we have Peterson parroting pro-Israel talking points on the Abraham Accords, which he praises for advancing peace. But this is total nonsense. Life has spiraled downwards for Palestinians since Arab governments betrayed them in signing the Abraham Accords two years ago. Israeli forces have since carried out violent and deadly raids on Palestinian worshippers at Al Aska Mosque. Bomb Gaza relentlessly killing 260 people, including 67 children, in a single 11 day period last year. Entire Palestinian families are being violently expelled from their homes in occupied Jerusalem and the West Bank, while settler terrorist attacks increase in both frequency and ferocity. How can any Muslim in good conscience make a pen pal with Jews that are stealing their land and homes and bombing them in steel cages? But Peterson knows he's being ridiculous. He's only repeating rehearsed lines given to him by the Israel lobby. And if somehow my radar is off and he's not advancing the interests of Israel for personal gain, well then he's even dumber than we thought. Because what we would have here is a rich white dude living securely in a safe and prosperous nation urging Uyghur Muslims to make pen pals with the same Chinese people that are exterminating them in Xinjiang. He would also be encouraging Rohingya Muslims in Myanmar to make friends with the same Buddhist militias that murdered and raped more than 50,000 of their friends and family members. Yeah, and good luck getting Muslims in India and Kashmir to write sweet letters to the same Hindu nationalist forces that have pushed them to the brink of genocide. If he's not a paid agent of Israel, then he's just a total moron which would explain why he dresses up his lies and ignorance with pseudo-intellectual gobbledygook to make you believe he actually knows what he's talking about. Point out that it is not the individual carriers of the woke, politically correct, degenerate, neo-Marxist ideas that should be regarded as the enemy either. You see, Peterson's special gift is impersonating what a stupid person thinks a smart person sounds like. But ultimately, he knows nothing about Islam, Muslims, and the Middle East. And he made this perfectly clear in his message to Muslims. I hope non-Muslims are listening. Anyway, that's a wrap for today. But while you're here, please support this endeavor and my journalism by becoming a member for this show at patreon.com slash CJ Wellerman. We can't produce, sustain, and grow this endeavor without your help, and we offer exclusive benefits to those who do. But for now, good night, good morning, or good day, wherever you are, and stay blessed. I love the point or the angle this guy is coming from, where CJ is coming from, you know. Um, there's a lot of misconceptions when it comes to what's happening in the world, where it's happening in the world, because there is agenda behind these things. Because for someone to see it and say what he's saying, I don't know. That's why when you're doing research, there's always people that are going to say war is important and others are going to say no, it's not. Do you understand? Uh, which side do you decide to go with? It's really up to you, but this shows again ignorance. Ignorance. You come, first of all, you come to this country in the name of peace, then create an explosive group that just goes wild, 
with the antiques and what they do to the country, what they do to the populations. You divide and conquer this country. I guess you've achieved what you wanted to achieve. And when they, and when they start fighting against you, they become the bad guy. How are they the bad guys when you created them? We have to ask ourselves many, many things. And then videos like this, uh, not what he was reacting to, not what he was speaking to, but what his, his opinion or my videos like this will always be limited or censored to, to a certain point or just not pushed to reach people out there. Stop believing everything you see in the news. Stop believing what you see in the, in the media. Stop believing people that clearly have this agenda or someone is supporting them to push this agenda you really really have to be careful with the information that you take in because someone is going to sit and say yeah they should just it's not that simple it's not that simple as long as the person that came to divide and conquer has achieved what they're doing they'll continue to uh, support this division as long as there is confusion at home I hope you understand what I'm saying um, let me know what you guys actually think about this uh, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in my next reaction video.